conflict is critical in storytelling because the purpose of a story, movie story, is to communicate emotion, to create emotion in the audience. If I'm trying to write a scene that shows um, a woman loves her young son and I show them walking down the street and she holds his hand and she gives him a hug, I guess I've communicated that she loves him. But if I write a scene in which the same woman is walking down the street with her young son and she turns away for a second and she looks back and he's gone and she runs around through the crowded street looking for him and she bangs on the window of a store and says, have you seen my son? And she gets her cell phone out and she's calling 911 and tears are streaming down her face and then she turns and she sees her son standing by a toy store window and she goes and gives him a big hug. Now I've dramatized that she loves him. The difference is conflict. The conflict allows the characters to reveal their truth in an emotional way. A screenplay story must be boiled down to a central conflict, preferably one sentence. Uh, it's critical because if you don't do that, if you don't know what your story's about simply and clearly, you don't know what belongs in your story and you don't know what not to put in your story because you're going to think of all kinds of great scenes and characters and bits of dialogue, all this wonderful stuff, but half of it, 90% of it, probably won't fit in your story. You can't know that unless you know what your story's about. Uh, when Laurence Olivier filmed Hamlet in the 1940s, the first thing he did was he shows you see a picture of the castle, Elsinore, and then you hear Olivier's voiceover saying, this is the story of a man who could not make up his mind. Now that's Hamlet, that's the most powerful, complex piece of writing in the English language, and Olivier boiled it down to one sentence. And uh, if you can't, if he can do it with Hamlet, you can do it with your story. If you don't know what it is, you can't possibly uh, know what belongs in and what belongs out of the movie. And the other thing is, if you don't know what your movie's about in one sentence, you don't know when it's over. How do you know what it ends unless you know what the central conflict is? Therefore, that's what must be resolved. A lot of people think the second act is harder to write, but I don't think they are. I think the reason they feel that way is because they're, the metaphor they're using to write is incorrect. They're thinking of the second act as a bridge between the beginning and their preconceived ending. And if you look at your story that way, then the second act will seem like a boring series of artificial obstacles to keep your hero from getting to where you already know he's gonna get. I like to think of a movie more like a road trip. And you're in the driver's seat, you're the author, and the audience is in the back seat, and you know we're all starting out from Los Angeles, and we're probably gonna go to New York, but we may not wind up going to New York, and I'm, my job is to take you on the most interesting trip I can possibly take you on, and I might decide to go to Denver, or I might swing down by St. Louis, we don't know. And so when you look at it that way, you're following your characters through this exciting conflict that you've set up for them, then the, the second act becomes fresh and lively, and it's where I put in some of the, the most fun stuff in the script often is in the second act. Uh, and when you wind up at the ending, it might turn out to be the same ending that you thought you were gonna have, but it might not. It might, you might decide you're not gonna go to New York, you're gonna go to Boston. And that lively unpredictability will keep your second act from seeming like uh, a clothesline stretched between two uh, static points. Structure generates fundamentally from character. Um, when, once you get your, once your characters start moving forward and you've gotten through roughly act one, you've gotten the premise of your, of your film started, the characters should start to take on a life of their own. And um, what you'll find is that you'll come to certain points in the middle of your writing experience and the, 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 the character says, I want to go this way, but your story outline says he really is supposed to go that way. And when you come to that fork in the road, always follow the character, not the plot. Change the plot to fit the character. The reason is because the audience is doing that. The audience isn't watching the movie with a copy of your outline and saying, well, no, no, whoa, whoa, he was supposed to go over here. The audience, hopefully, is engaged with the character's journey, and therefore, they want to see the character go where the character feels right. 
and the second it starts to deviate from that and it feels false, the audience checks out emotionally and you've lost them forever. So the characters ultimately dictate where the story goes. Always change the plot to fit what the characters 